And uh, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Uh, God and Father, thank you so much for your love and for your mercy, for your kindness. Thank you for our friends and neighbors that are here with us today. God, help us, God, to really hear your voice and to respond to your voice first and foremost. Uh, God, I pray that we would have a heart that completely repents, that we would hold nothing back from you, but instead we would give you our all. We thank you for your love and compassion. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, last week we talked about Joshua and uh, just how important it was that uh, for Joshua that he uh, had the conviction to be a learner who became a leader who built a legacy. And that uh, Joshua's heart was one where he stayed in the tent. And, uh, uh, and when uh, Moses had left the tent, he met with God and Joshua stayed in the tent uh, and he learned for 40 years how to lead Israel. And then he also, we also talked about the importance of staying in the tent. And I pray that this has been a great week of Bible study and prayer and you really being close to God. Today we're going to take a look at the king, King Josiah. So I want to invite you to turn over to Second Chronicles, or Second Kings rather, chapter 23. Second Kings chapter 23. And here we meet King Josiah at a pivotal time in his life and in his faith. And, uh, and the title of today's lesson is All or Nothing. And if you walk out of here with a, a clear message today, I pray that you feel loved with all that we are. And I pray that nothing is lacking in our love for you. And I pray that you make a decision to love God with all that you are and that you hold nothing back. Francis Chan uh, once said that God wants all or nothing. The thought of a person calling himself a Christian without being a devoted follower of Christ is absurd. And you've got to be totally committed to God. Josiah shows us an amazing example of what that looks like. In 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 25 it reads, Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord with all of his heart, with all of his soul, with all of his strength, in accordance with all of the law of Moses. Josiah was born into a kingdom that was in absolute rebellion against God. Back from the time of Solomon, Israel had started a moral decline that had continued up to the time of Josiah. Josiah's grandfather, Manasseh, was the wickedest king in all of Israel. All of, he was the wickedest king in, in Judah. He was an amazingly, fiercely wicked man. So intense was his wickedness that it is reported that he had Isaiah the prophet sawed in two. I mean, he's just worshipped all the false gods. I mean, horrible guy. But because of his wickedness, he was taken into captivity. And in his captivity, he turned to the Lord. With a ring in his nose, he was taken into captivity. And in his captivity, he turned to the Lord. And the Lord heard his prayer and restored him. And Manasseh, for the rest of his life, lived his life as a righteous man. Josiah was four years old when Manasseh died. And his father, Josiah's father, Ammon, was an equally wicked king as his father, Manasseh, had been before him. And when Josiah was eight years old, he became king. And when he was 16, between 15 and 16 years old, he began to search after the Lord. And as he did that, he, he instituted reforms in Israel. And as a result of his commitment to restore the temple of the Lord, the book of the Lord, the book of God, the, the, the word of God was found. And he read, he had the word of the Lord read to him. And he was convicted by what he heard. He trembled before God. And I want you to just jot down Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. And there God says, where is the house you'll build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hands made all these things? 
And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one who I esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. That was from Isaiah the prophet, the prophet that his grandfather had killed. Said that when you hear the word of the Lord, you should tremble. And when Josiah heard the word of the Lord, he trembled. He responded in holy fear. And he called Israel back. And it says about him that there was no one like him that loved God with all of his heart, with all of his soul, with all of his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses. As a church, it is our commitment to love God this way. And we pray that when we stand before God as individuals and as a church, that God will say about the Potomac Valley Church, he'll say about your faith, never before and never after was there a people that completely turned back to God and worship God. We live in a country that currently is in the same moral decay that Israel was in. A country that's completely turned away from God. That we claim that it is, you know, in God we trust, but our actions say the opposite. And I don't say that because I have any ill will against any government official or any leader. We respect all just laws. And we follow all the laws of the land that, that are in, consistent with God's word. But I will say this. If there's any hope for the world... It will be found in the brothers and sisters that make a decision to serve God with righteousness. You know, it's amazing. Josiah served God for 31 years. And at the age of 39, Josiah was killed. He was shot. He was shot by an arrow. Tomorrow, our country remembers Martin Luther King Jr., who was killed at the age of 39. He was also shot. And I appreciate all of the work, and I'm so grateful for all of the work that Martin Luther King did and the, the, the conviction that he had to stand up against racial injustice. And that's an honorable thing. And the truth is, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't have the, the, the kind of environment in our country today where we can celebrate diversity if not for the courageous actions of men that are willing to live and give their lives as Dr. Martin Luther King did. But let me say this, the laws can make us work beside each other, live beside each other, but they don't change the human heart. And the reality is the dream that Dr. King had will never be realized until people's hearts are transformed before God. And the only hope that we have in this country for transformation to happen is through Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you today as we gather and as we prepare for a day of assembly that as disciples of Jesus, as Christians that have said, Jesus is Lord, just like Jim and Olga said, Jesus is Lord, we have to make Jesus Lord in our actual lives. Not mouthing those words, but living them by the way we treat our neighbor, by the way we love our friends, by the way we treat our enemies, by the way we walk so that we can love God with all that we are. But for us to have that conviction and to live in that way, we have to deal with our sin. Turn over to 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 1. And I want to encourage you in your own time to read through this. I'm just going to reference what Josiah did. After he did away with the issues in the temple, he brought all the priests who were burning the incense, and, and he broke down the shrines. He desecrated, in verse 10, uh, Topheth, which was in the valley of Benohim, so that no one could sacrifice their sons or daughters to Molech. That's how detestable things had gotten. They were killing their kids to Molech. He pulled down, in verse 12, the altars the kings of Judah had erected. He, he, he removed uh, from there and smash them to pieces. He destroyed uh, the high places that Solomon had set up on the hill of corruption that were built to the vile uh, goddess of the Sidonians and to Shemosh, the vile god of Moab, and to Molech, the detestable god of Ammon. 
He smashed the sacred stones. Even the altars at Bethel, the high places that Jeroboam had set up, he destroyed those. He remembered the, the, and, and honored the man of God from Judah and the, the prophet from Samaria. And he didn't disturb their bones, but he desecrated all the others. He, he went all throughout Bethel and he defiled all the shrines so that no one could use the shrines anywhere. And after he had removed all those things, he brought Israel together for a Passover. He did away with the mediums and the spiritists and the household gods and the idols and all the other detestable gods, as, as it says, all the other detestable things, as it says in verse 24. Josiah went the distance. Let me ask you a question, and just the one. Are you willing to go the distance? Are you willing to deal with your rage that's causing harm to you and your family? Are you willing to deal with your addictions? Are you willing to deal with your religious pride and destroy that and, and, and bring that before the foot of the cross? If you're willing to do that, then we can share a common faith. The thing that's amazing about the church that Jesus establishes is it's not established based on edicts or rules or, or, or you know, the proclamations of men. It's not established on an individual. It's not established on a charismatic leader or leaders. It's established on Jesus Christ. And because it's established on Jesus Christ, all people can stream to it, as the prophets said. All people can learn to beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. We can let go of anything and we can be transformed and changed from any difficulty. There is no place too far for God. That's the story of Manasseh. And there's no age too young to step up. For me and my generation, and for all of us that are older than my generation, we have to prepare ourselves to raise up Josiahs in our midst. There are seven and eight year old kids that we've got to make sure we're taking the time to not be too busy, but to have family time with them. And we've got to recognize that our teenagers at the age of 16, 15, 16, 17, that they can seek the Lord and they can lead in powerful ways. And that men like Josiah at the age of 26 all the way to 39, can do amazing things. So I want to encourage all you young people. God has a plan for you. You don't have to be old to step up for God. But I want to encourage the older generation, like we read last week with, jo with Joshua. God has a plan for you if you're 40. God has a plan for you if you're 80. God has a plan for you all the way up to 110. And if you live past that, God bless you. God clearly had a plan for you. God has a plan for all of us. Let's gather together this coming Wednesday and enjoy fellowship and Bible study. Let's meet together throughout the week. Let's gather next week. Let's come prepared with our hearts ready to remove every high place, every altar set up to any God other than the true and living God. And let's turn to God with all and leave nothing undealt with. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Let me pray for you. Our God and Father, you are our all in all. And we come to you devoted to follow you with all that we are. God, help us to love you with all of our strength, with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our being, Lord. God, thank you for the blessings that you've given us, God. Thank you for the, the blood drive and the service and all the amazing things that you're doing. We're so grateful for those things. Thank you for Jim and Olga, God. They're such an amazing couple and we look forward to their faith and their incredibly aggressive hospitality and love that we know that they just overflows from them already. God, now that they've been given your Holy Spirit, we look forward to seeing all that you'll do with them. Please be with us. Please be with those of us that have said Jesus is Lord, that we have set up in the temple of the Lord, for you've said that we are your temple in our own hearts. We have allowed false gods to set up dominion. Gods of greed. Gods 
of wickedness. God, help us to tear down those altars, level everything to the ground, grind it into fine dust, destroy it so it can never be rebuilt, and to live every day of the rest of our lives with all of our hearts devoted to you. God, help us to be open and to be real. We are so flawed and messed up. We are, we are made of dirt, and you know us, God. You know that we are just men, We're, and, and my sisters are just women, God. You know us, God, and you want us to turn to you, God. Help us now to rally and help this whole church to be like Israel was in the time of Josiah, that all of our hearts are devoted to you. Spread this fire of incredible restoration, God, in all the places where people say Jesus is Lord so that all the people that share this common faith will join together so that we can see a revival of restoration in America where people can see the Lord and will seek the Lord and will turn back to you. And we know, God, that you've already said in your word that you will bring final judgment to this world. But we pray in our generation that we are not silent, but that we speak up. That we pray in our generation that we remember what Martin Luther King said, God, that it's always time to do right. God, we'll have the courage to follow you and to do right now with our children with our households, with our brothers and sisters, all the single brothers and sisters, all the college students, that we'll turn to you. We pray that when we gather next week, it will be a time of repentance like we've never seen before so that all will be given to you and nothing will be left undealt with. We pray all these things with confidence in Jesus' name. Amen.